Welcome. I'm glad you decided to check out this lesson on listening. I truly believe it's the most undervalued leadership skill. I think that's because most people just don't see it as important, which is a real shame. My name is Jerry Ann Kelly, and I'm a John Maxwell Leadership Certified Executive, and I own my own company, J.A. Kelly Consulting, right here in Randolph County. I specialize in helping businesses grow and improve outcomes through the development of their people. Let's get started. When most people hear the word listen, they immediately imagine a mom telling their child to listen, or maybe a wife telling her husband to pay attention and listen and stop with the selective hearing. Hopefully that doesn't ring true to any of you. When people who want to become better listeners hear the word listen, they often wonder how well they personally listen. I hope you're here today because you want to become a better listener and you want to make that an important part of your life. I'd like to share a few thoughts with you about the word listen as it pertains to improving company results by improving your listening skills as a leader. You will get many benefits from developing effective listening habits. Listed on the slide are just a few that I thought of that I would like to share. One of the ones I think is really important is it will help you collaborate more effectively with your team members. Also, the next one. Research shows us that your future success can heavily depend on your ability to listen effectively. I wish I had more time to share info on that. Another one is it reduces the chances of conflict and it's more likely to result in a win-win situation when everybody is hearing each other. The bottom line is, I'd like to share this quote, becoming an effective listener will improve relationships with your team, your customers, and your loved ones. Isn't that great? You're learning this for more than one reason. Let's move on to suggestions I have to improve your listening. Put aside those distractions, okay? Anything that beeps at you, your phone, your computer, it's very, very distracting. Not only tempting for you to look down and consider answering it, but for the person that you're trying to communicate with, they hear that and they think, oh, they're probably paying attention to that. Make good eye contact, but please don't stare at people. They're gonna come across thinking you're weird. Now, here's one a lot of people don't think about and I think is very, very important. If you're in an office and you sit behind a desk and somebody comes in to talk with you, get up from behind your desk and walk around your desk and sit side by side to the person so that you're looking at them with no barriers. That desk represents a barrier and it can be a barrier to an effective communication conversation. So think about that. Now, I know we all don't have offices, including me, that are big enough to put two extra chairs in. And that's totally understandable. So you can always say, hey, let's go sit down somewhere where it's more comfortable. My office is a mess. So let's just go next door to our little conference room. So if you are designing your office space, think about private places that you can have conversations. Next is not interrupting. Now, probably this should go without even being said, but I've got to say, please don't interrupt people. It's really hard to continue trains of thoughts when somebody's interrupting you. And you don't want to do that to the person you're trying to talk to. Let's move on to a bunch more. Restate and clarify what you have heard. Always helpful to make sure, one, you've actually heard it correctly and didn't misinterpret it. And it reassures that person building some trust, which is another one with them, that um, you have heard of, okay? Don't offer solutions, which is very tempting for leaders. Unless, of course, you've asked, would you like to hear my opinion? It's okay to say that, but don't pop off with a, a solution without being asked. Asking curious questions, that is awesome. Now, when I say curious, I don't mean interrogate. I don't mean asking them uh, things like, what were you thinking? Or why did you do that? We want to ask questions that dig deeper into that conversation, dig deeper into that person's rationale behind whatever it is that they're saying. Next, don't one-up them. 
I guarantee we all have a friend that when you tell them a story about yourself, I did this funny X, Y, Z thing. And as soon as you're done speaking, they say, oh, I've got one even better. I have no one that's even funnier. How does that make you feel? I don't know about you, but I feel like they really weren't listening to my story and they were really more waiting for me to finish so they could tell their story. Next, be careful of your body language. It's kind of funny when I was preparing, I looked up fidgeting and it actually says feeling impatient. So if I'm with somebody that's fidgeting and they're moving around, you know, kind of like I'm doing right now, and you see them doing that, it makes you feel like they must really want to get this conversation over. So they're impatient with the situation. Not a great way to walk away. Now, back to interrupting. I do want to give you a hint. If you do tend to interrupt and you really feel like I'm going to forget what I was going to say, it's okay to write it down. Jot down what you wanted to say as opposed to interrupting them. But caution, don't take so many notes that your head is down the whole time and in your writing and you really are taking notes. The person you're talking to doesn't know why you're taking notes. They don't know what you're doing. You could be journaling for all they know, right? So what I suggest is to let them know, I'm going to be taking some notes because I don't want to miss anything that you're saying. And then it's okay, then you can take your notes. Now, a note on planned conversations. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not. But if you're having a planned conversation and you've got a preconceived notion about the person, maybe you know they're a rambler, <laughs> or you have an opinion of the topic they wanna talk about, take the time to slow down, take a couple minutes and clear your mind, okay? Deep breaths. Okay, I'm going to clear my mind of my opinions. I'm going to go into the room with an open mind, and I'm really going to intentionally listen. That will help so much. It'll help you, and it will really help the relationship with the person that you're speaking to. If you're not sure of why you're being called into the conversation, then it is okay, just in case you're wondering, to ask, how can I help you? Just like it's okay to say, would you like me to share my opinion or not? You can ask those questions and it will help the conversation move along. That's all I have for today. Thank you for your time. And I truly hope this added value to you. One last note and a reminder, be intentional with listening. And remember, this can impact your personal and your professional life. So it's well worth practicing. One last quote from me, if you're not listening, you may miss out on getting to know someone really awesome that has spectacular stories to share with you. And I wouldn't want you to miss out on that. I've included my contact information on the last slide. If you have any questions or you wanna reach out, please feel free to do so. So our time is up. I hope you enjoyed the time and bye for now. Thank you.